It's time to eat. What are you hungry for? Sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from Ross Tucker and Joe Dolan. Feed me now. I'm starving. On the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. Yeah, let's eat, baby. It is the Fantasy Feast Eating Podcast. Presented, of course, by DraftKings. Love me some DraftKings. Love me some fantasy football, and especially like pre-draft rookie rankings. Why? Because we need to remember what we think of these guys as prospects before they go to certain situations, specific teams. We'll get to that momentarily. Remember, I'm at Ross Tucker NFL on social media. I'm going to start to have focuses each week whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or TikTok. Yes, at Ross Tucker NFL. I do do some TikToking these days. Please check them out. And we are at Ross Tucker Pod, Twitter and Instagram. And then you can always watch these shows, which a lot of people do now, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Love talking with my guy, Joe Dolan. He's at FG underscore Dolan on Twitter. He is the master of all he oversees at fantasypoints.com, where you should use the code 22FEAST to get a discount on the already existing early bird discounts on the best fantasy football and more informational website I'm aware of. By the way, I just got a tweet from somebody who said that they bought Emory Hunt's draft guide. I love that. I love when you guys support the co-hosts of the show's I literally could not do the show without them. Joe's the fantasy guy. We know Fezzik's the betting guy. Emery, of course, is the draft guy. So make sure. And Joe also got a shout out on the Raw Tucker Football Podcast today from uh, an email questioner. Talked about how awesome Joe was at Notre Dame Green Pond. I doubt it. But now that he's like a famous fantasy guy, everybody wants to act like Joe was so nice and they were friends. Am I right, Joe? (laughs) <laughs> nobody's uh nobody's called me from the alumni association yet let's just put it that way <laughs> but uh but no uh, uh yeah I, I mean i'm glad uh people people enjoyed the show i think that was mike who who sent that in i i, I grew up i mean i've known mike's brother-in-law i can now i'm 35 ross i can now say i've known somebody for decades um and i i've known mike's brother-in-law kevin for decades i mean literally uh, like 30 years so um but no it, i mean it, it's kind of funny how those things work out small world all that um the beauty of connecting uh ross and uh here we are and here we are we're you and i are connected here uh you you're you're from where near where i grew up i now live in south carolina but we are connected by the power of technology just like al gore predicted all those years ago by the I way mean, joe I will be going to the Pennsylvania State University on Saturday for a little thing called the Blue White Game. Isn't it supposed to rain? Well, let me check. Last time I checked, it said like 40%. No rain right now in the forecast. Oh, okay. Well, that's good because, I mean, the last the last time I was up there when my wife was getting her PhD, um, I was the, the – and I knew we were going to be moving down to Clemson eventually um, – uh, I, that was supposed to be my last hurrah in 2020, like the big tailgate, you know, and you know what happened. And yeah, uh, that, you that call was your a, wife doctor. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I mean, uh, never. I, I, mean, I mean, not, not just every what, once in a while. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, every, every now and again, I mean, no, but she is, I mean, that that's her, that's her honor. Uh, she has earned that, that, that she, she has earned her honorary uh, title. What do you call that? Uh, your, uh, like Mr. Miss Doctor, that your your yeah. honorary whatever the hell it's supposed to be called. Yeah. No, but I mean on like wedding invitations, you, you put doctor. You know, she's a doctor. Yeah, she's got her doctorate. I love it. You should have your doctorate in fantasy football. They don't give those out yet, Ross. I don't know. I don't understand why. They I, should. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but I like when you hit this home. We are going to get into your pre-draft rookie quarterback and running back rankings. These are big for dynasty, big for best ball. And as I said earlier, I think it's valuable to do this 
before the draft because I think we get so enamored with team and situation after the draft mm -hmm. that we kind of forget about what we actually thought of these guys as players. Yeah, I, um, what, what's the, uh, the, the to borrow from Greg Cosell? And believe me, this time of year, I borrow from Greg Cosell a lot. <laughs> Team and scheme specific. That's a Greg Cosellism. Uh, and uh, I will be borrowing from him with his great evaluations that we have of the fantasypoints.com, which, which again, 22 piece. I mean, it's $25 and you get money off and you get all these evaluations that I continually up. I have more to put in today. Uh, but anyway, Ross, I will be borrowing, borrowing from that. I've used a lot of his evaluations in addition to relating, you know, stuff I've done on my own. And, and some of the stuff that Wes Huber, you know, he's been on the podcast, Scott Barrett, who's been on the podcast, their evaluations to kind of make my pre-draft rookie rankings. Yes. And I know damn well that by the end of next week, these are going to be completely blown up, but such is the nature of the game. That is correct. Let's start with your quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. You have Malik Willis, number one. Yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of obvious uh, because of Malik Willis' skill set. Uh, great arm. Um, but mostly it's because he's a, a true modern quarterback in that he's got the second reaction and the design run game elements to his game. Now the question becomes, of course, uh, I, I, look, uh, going into the draft, if Malik Willis gets drafted by Carolina, okay, Malik Willis is a slam dunk QB1 because I know damn well that even if they want Sam Darnold to start the year, Sam Darnold's going to start the year, crap it up for three games, and then Malik Willis is going to come in. Maybe if he goes to the Lions, something somebody like the Lions, the 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 chance of him starting right away are a little bit lessened because Jared Goff is certainly a competent holdover. But Malik Willis has all the skills you look for in the modern game. There could be a learning curve. Uh, Liberty's offense is exceptionally simplistic. Does that mean Malik Willis cannot operate an NFL offense? For sure not. It's just that we haven't seen him do that. Um, he's going to be asked to do that. He's going to have to learn more of an offense. There's probably a little bit of a learning curve with Malik Willis, but the guy's skill set is outrageous. Um, uh, he is the number one fantasy quarterback in this draft. Again, once we see landing spot, then maybe we'll reevaluate. But Malik Willis is going to be the most appealing quarterback in rookie drafts for Jimmy. Interesting that you have Kenny Pickett number two, Joe. I didn't know if guys that run more like Corral or Ritter would be higher. You know, this is just be based on what you're hearing about uh, throughout the league, that Kenny Pickett has a shot to come in and start from day one, depending on landing spot. Carolina, again, we're going to look at the same teams that need quarterbacks. Carolina, um, you've got uh, Seattle needs quarterback. I think the, the, the problem here that makes this so tricky is there could be a team like New Orleans that ends up trading up, or maybe a guy falls, maybe a team like Pittsburgh. And those guys, those teams, especially New Orleans, don't need somebody to step in and start right away because New Orleans is Jameis Winston. So that's what's going to change this. But I think Kenny Pickett, you know, he's got he's got all the experience. He's pro ready, whatever that's supposed to mean. I think based on the fact that what I've read, what I've seen, what I've been told, that teams around the league view him as the most NFL ready quarterback here. That's why he's number two, because I think he's got the best shot to be a week one starter of this group. Number three in the Dolan rankings, the aforementioned Matt Corral. And I, th this one I'm really wrestling with because it really seems like the league is high on Desmond Ritter of Cincinnati, who's next on my list, by the way. Uh, so not huge. So I'm th I'm expecting Desmond Ritter to get drafted in the first round, and I'm not sure Matt Corral will. But Matt Corral, again, because of his skill set, he's got he's got the the second reaction ability um he's super competitive he gives you the designed run game um uh, feel he's quick and he's athletic this is a guy who if he's starting games is going to be fantasy relevant again i'm just not sure he's going to be a first round pick where i'm at the point based on what everything i've been reading and hearing i expect desmond ritter to go in the first round well let's get to desmond ritter yeah. you know it's funny um there are certain guys like, I don't know, ever since the season ended, Sam Howell has just been going down, down, yeah. down. Whereas before the season, some people were saying that Sam Howell was the only guy 
that they had for sure as a first round pick. Yeah, and let, let's talk with Hal, by the way, who is my number five. But I know our guy Wes Huber, he has stuck to his guns and he's kept Sam Hal at the top of his board. The problem is for quarterbacks, draft capital is so incredibly important. Um, and, and it is for running backs too, and we'll get to them. But for quarterbacks, it's so important. And if a guy goes in the second round, I mean, I cannot rank him as my top rookie quarterback at, at, at this point. And I think that's where Sam Howell is going to get drafted. Um, he, Sam Howell, by the way, does give you the design run element. So I think he just had a, a year where he wasn't great. And, I, and apparently he admits that. I haven't talked to him personally, but I, I, I've heard interviews with him where he's like, yeah, you know, this was not the greatest year for me. And unfortunately for Sam Howell, it looks like it's going to affect his draft capital. But let's go to Desmond Ritter. And he is one of two quarterbacks in this class um, that Greg Cosell pointed out to me who fit the Bill Parcells uh, old quarterback evaluation uh, checkpoints. Now, that that they're a little bit outdated, but it's interesting that there's two guys, Kenny Pickett being the other in this class. Do you know what those uh, checkpoints are, Ross? The Parcells? Yes. Yeah, I remember some of them. Don't be uh, – you have to play – start at least like – Three years, mm -hmm. you, you can't be a um, celebrity quarterback. He's got a bunch of them. Well, the, the 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 two that are actually verifiable, like in terms of the information we have and we know it to be a fact without a subjective uh, without a subjective analysis, is that he was a three year starter who won more than twenty three games in college. So those are if Bill Parcells was drafting quarterback in this class, and Bill Parcells hasn't been in that position for a while, Desmond Ritter uh, and Kenny Pickett would be at the top of his board based on that. And it really does seem um, that Desmond Ritter is, is appealing to NFL teams. First and foremost, he's super athletic, four five two forty. He's six three. He's two eleven. Um, uh, he, by the way, one twenty seven on the broad jump. Like this guy can move. He can throw. And, I mean, I know QB wins and all that. People make fun of it. The guy won 44 games in college. That's a lot of wins. This is a guy who lost five games. That's it for Desmond Ritter. Um, uh, and he was throwing. Uh, he wasn't throwing to big-time prospects. I know Alec Pierce is going to probably be drafted on the second day of the NFL draft. And we'll talk about him uh, maybe on next week's program. But Desmond Ritter was not throwing, you know, to, to Jamison Williams and John Mechie or Chris Olave and, and and Garrett Wilson, not not knocking those quarterbacks because we know how those guys are going to be evaluated. But Desmond Ritter did this throwing to guys um, maybe who might be playing in the USFL soon. So this is somebody who made some big time throws. He's super athletic. He's probably got to work on his delivery, but I would not be stunned if Desmond Ritter is a day one starter. And I think there is a chance based on landing spot that Desmond Ritter jumps to the top of my rankings next week after the draft if Malik Willis does not land in a spot where it looks like he's got a clear path to a starting job. Desmond Ritter is probably the guy throughout this process who I've started to become higher and higher and higher on. Um, one thing that he does have to improve on, third downs. He wasn't great on third downs despite playing for a great team. Teams are going to have to evaluate that. This is a super talented player. I always am a little bit leery of the guys that it seems like they're going up this time of year. Mm -hmm. You and know, it's sort of like what are they? What 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 changed since the the bowl game? You know, right? And like it's interesting with Ritter because this guy was on like the national stage. I mean, they made the college football playoff. This isn't like you know Carson Wentz coming out of North Dakota State or Trey Lance coming out of North Dakota State, and and all of a sudden you know. Uh, for a couple months, you're like, you know, this guy could be a day two pick. And then all of a sudden, they're a top three pick. Um, I don't think that's what, what the case is with Desmond Ritter. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think you could probably look back to some guys who were kind of late emerging. And you and then you're like, okay, uh, why weren't people on him a little bit earlier? And then you look at guys. I, I think Baker Mayfield, he won the Heisman. Like, it's not like Baker Mayfield was – um, was some scrub that they dug out of nowhere. But I don't think Baker Mayfield for a lot of the season was considered like the number one overall pick. I don't know what the case is with Desmond Ritter. He, I think a lot of mock drafts have Desmond Ritter going like to the Lions at 32, um, maybe the Steelers at 20. I don't think he's kind of snuck into that top half. But based on what I'm hearing, 
a lot of teams like Desmond Ritter more than than maybe um more than maybe the draft Twitterati does. And sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't. But you look at the traits and you can see why if he were landing in a starting spot, he would be appealing for fantasy. Draft Twitterati. Uh, I, like I love it. Last guy I want to ask you about is just Carson Strong. Since I saw him in college, you have him as your sixth guy after Sam Howe. Yeah, and the reason is because um, unlike the five guys in front of him, and certainly some guys offer designed runs more. Like Kenny Pickett's got some second reaction to him, but he's probably not going to get the design runs. Carson Carson Strong's a pylon. Uh, uh, like, I mean, he's... He's standing in there. I just built a, a trellis for my wife so she could grow cucumbers. Carson Strong is a cucumber trellis. You want that thing to stand in the ground and grow moss and stuff like that. Like, that's what Carson Strong's game is. And, Ross, while he has great arm talent, his game is kind of old school. He is a pocket passer with virtually zero second reaction plays. And also, he's got to learn to work within the confines of the pocket. You know, Tom Brady, nobody's mistaking Brady – you know, for, for Josh Allen, you know, Brady isn't going out there and trucking people, but Tom Brady works within the pocket and avoids pressure. I don't really see that as a strength of Carson Strong's game right now. He's going to be a guy who I think is probably off the board on day two, and he might be behind a veteran quarterback on a team that, that values pocket passing. And those teams seem to be, uh, 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 eventually guys all, all need to win from the pocket, but teams who strictly rely on pocket passing seem to kind of be going out, uh, out of vogue a little bit. Love that you did that for your wife, by the way, the cucumber trellis, mm -hmm. and hope that you've already gotten your awesome, supportive mother a glorious story from myfrontpagestory.com for Mother's Day. She deserves it. I know she listens and watches everything you do. I know how supportive she is. I also don't think you've gotten her a story yet. So myfrontpagestory.com, nobody ever knows what to get their mom. Or if it's your wife, if you guys have kids, I know you don't, Joe, yet, but if anybody else does, myfrontpagestory.com. Let's get to the running backs. Ross, I've already gotten good. my mom a fantastic Mother's Day gift. I'll get her, I'll get her a my front page story too, but she's gonna freak with her Mother's Day gift. Oh Guaranteed. Nice. You'll have to I don't tell know if she's I, I I can't I can't give it away. She is gonna go nuts though. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um speaking of awesome, it's interesting. Seems pretty much the consensus that Brees Hall from Iowa State's the number one running back. Yeah, and um, our guy Grant Barfield, who does his yards created series uh, at Fantasy Points, actually has Kenneth Walker number one. But the reason Kenneth Walker is number two on my board and Brees Hall is number one is because Brees Hall is the total package. Brees Hall, um, he caught the ball, he pass protects, he's patient. Um, I think you can see some similarities to Le'Veon Bell in his game. And that, for some, that might be why they're a little lower on Brees Hall, those who are. And believe me, nobody's low on Brees Hall. But some might might think him he's patient to a fault. But this is a guy who's super athletic, um, uh, caught the ball exceptionally well. And if there is a running back who goes in the first round of this year's draft, I would be stunned if it isn't Brees Hall. I know there have been people mocking Brees Hall to the Buffalo Bills. And while um, I know the Clyde Edwards-Alaire thing hasn't exactly worked out for fantasy, if Brees Hall is a Buffalo Bill, get me on that train. I will be drafting him top 50 for fantasy. Um, depending on where he lands, I might be drafting him top 50 for fantasy, even if he doesn't land with the Buffalo Bills, especially if he goes to a team where um, running the ball is going to be a priority, a team where there is no uh, competition for touches. For instance, I saw Brees Hall was taking a visit, and visits don't necessarily mean anything, but he was taking a visit to the Houston Texans, okay? The Houston Texans are going to blow. We know they're going to blow. But Brees Hall could get 300 touches there, and I don't care who you are. If you get 300 touches for fantasy, that's good news. Um, it might be frustrating sometimes, like it was with Najee Harris last year behind a bad offensive line, but if Brees Hall goes somewhere where he can get 300 touches, I am going to be drafting Brees Hall. He can do it all. He's the number one running back in this class pre-draft. I would be stunned if he's not post-draft. Where else do you think he could go, Joe? I mean, here's the thing when when it when it comes to these running backs, you have to look at. I'm gonna. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring up the, the draft order because I think he's gonna go late first or early second round. And I think early second round is typically where you see kind of these guys 
that's like the the the, the where where teams start drafting running backs. I think that's where they start to feel comfortable drafting uh, really high level running backs. Okay, Buffalo, I think is the first one that jumps off the board at number twenty five. Um, I don't think Tampa Bay at 27 is going to make that investment um, because they just paid uh, Leonard Fournette. And then you get into the second round, and then I think the next spot that really jumps out to me is Houston at number 37. Then you have Seattle with back-to-back first-round picks at four, uh, second-round picks, rather, at 40 and 41. I think he's probably going to get drafted there uh, somewhere before there. Atlanta at 43, I think, is a possibility. Baltimore at 45, I think, is a possibility. Uh, with uh, all their running backs coming off injuries, they were apparently looking at Melvin Gordon. Um, uh, that These are at least where I'm hoping he lands. Because, you know, as you well know, Ross, sometimes these guys get drafted where there's already an established back, and you're like, oh, no, what am I going to do? But I think Brees Hall is going to get an opportunity. I would be stunned if he's not off the board in the top 50 picks. Your number two back, you said it, is Kenneth Walker from Michigan State who had that amazing year. Yeah, and he he had a great year. And the question now becomes, what is he as a receiver? He was simply not asked to do that at Michigan State. Does that mean he can't? Does that mean they had saw something in his game where they're like, no, you're, you're not, you're, you're, that's just not your game. Now, we've seen guys like Adrian Peterson and Derrick Henry become absolutely fantasy studs despite not being strong in the passing game. Those guys are probably outliers. On the other hand, we've seen guys like A.J. Dillon come into the league after not being asked at all in college to be receivers and proving that not only are they competent, they're pretty good at it. So it's just an unanswered question of Kenneth Walker's game. But again, this is somebody I expect to be off the board early to middle of day two. Um, he's, he's got kind of that classic running back build that five, nine two eleven, you know, low to the ground, kind of, kind of stocky. Um, but he's super fast at four, three, eight, um, great contact balance. Um, and he's, he's got this like instinctive feel to his running. Like there's, there's, uh, he's, he's, You might argue that he kind of looks for the big play a little bit too often, but I really like the way Kenneth Walker runs. Graham Barfield adores him, has him as his number one yards created back. Again, what knocks him to number two on my board is the fact that he was not asked to be a receiver in college, but that does not necessarily mean he won't do it in the NFL. It's just an unanswered question. Just incredible how he seemingly came out of nowhere to have that year. Um, It's interesting looking at the fantasypoints.com guys. You have a wide range of opinions Huge. on the big boy, Brian Robinson from Alabama. He's your number three, Joe. Yeah, he's a big guy. Another Graham Barfield favorite. I know our guy, Wes Huber, isn't as high on Brian Robinson, which is what makes this fun, fun to evaluate. This is where, when it gets to rookie rankings, you really start to see the differentiation. Because I would I would guess most fantasy guys, and, I, and frankly, a lot of draft guys, are going to have Hall and Walker in some order as their number one and number two. Brian Robinson is the guy based on all the information that I have gathered. Um, and these th- that's what my rankings are. I'm never going to come out here and say, oh, I'm a draft expert and I've watched all 300 of this guy's runs and all 400 of that guy's runs. Brees Hall had eight. I'm not that. I've watched these guys, but I am soaking up information and building rankings based on that. And because Graham Barfield um, and Scott Barrett and Greg Cosell really liked Brian Robinson, This is why I have him at number three. Um, Greg Cosell, urgent, determined, physical, competitive, downhill runner who ran with velocity, power, and leg drive and gained the hard yards. The more I watched, the more I liked him as an NFL back. He has feature size back and trait, feature size, feature back size and traits, and it would not surprise me at all, here's the kicker, if some teams, based on team and scheme, had him as the number one running back on their board. Maybe the the guy who's built the most to handle the grind of the NFL game, if that team is built around the run game, if that team really wants to run the ball on early downs, for instance, I would not be shocked at all if Seattle pulled the trigger on Brian Robinson in the second round. Interesting. Yeah, they like, I mean, Pete Carroll likes to run the rock, ball control, power football, 
Uh, your next that's guy. what Alabama did, by the way. Uh, Brian Robinson had 169 carries on first down for Alabama. So that, that's what Alabama tells you this guy is. You know, I've heard a lot about sort of the next group of guys. Isaiah Spiller, James Cook, Rashad yeah. White, Damian Pierce from Florida. That's how you have those guys ranked, and, Joe. Spiller, Cook, White, Pierce. Your thoughts on, on that grouping? Yeah, well, Spiller sticks out like a sore thumb in that group because he is completely different than the other guys. I think I think Spiller is a is, is another guy in that competitive downhill uh, kind of grinder role. I know he was somebody who uh, his testing really had people down on him, but I never overreact to 40 yard dashes for running. I know he didn't run one at the combine, but he ran in that four, five, four, six range uh, at his pro day. And that was going to knock him for some people. But I always go back to a player who before the combine, when he came out of Toledo uh, a number of years ago, 2017, I loved Kareem Hunt. I loved watching him. I loved everything about him. And then he ran a 4.62 at the Combine. And everybody was freaking out about it. And I just, I, I, I took a deep breath and I went back and I watched Kareem Hunt again. And I was like, I don't care. I don't care that he ran in a straight line in a 4.6 because that wasn't his game. Contact balance, receiving, those were his game. And it, and it turned out that he ended up being a pretty damn good NFL running back right from day one. Uh, literally, he had a huge uh, NFL debut. And I don't think I like Isaiah Spiller nearly as much as I liked Kareem Hunt coming out. Um, but he he's kind of that guy who, if he ran a 4-6, so what? I don't really think that's his game. He's very uh, competitive. He's got good contact balance. He's kind of a sustainer. But the problem is, I think he might be somebody who gets drafted where there's already an established back. And I think that's that might knock him down below that next group of guys that you mentioned with Cook and Pierce and White, because those guys I think can come in where there already is an established back and carve out a separate role, which could be intriguing for fantasy. Any guy late that we think will get drafted later, Joe, or maybe even undrafted free agent that, you know, you like like a James Robinson type. I know that, you know, you'd have him ranked higher if you thought he'd be right, that kind exactly. of player. Right, exactly. But- is James Robinson Haskins or Kyron, maybe Pierre Strong, South well, Dakota State. Is there I a guy that that you think could have could kind of be the sleeper? Yeah. So Pierre Strong, um, I think, is probably going to be drafted a little bit earlier because of his really strong like athleticism. So I think he'll probably go on day three. Um, a couple of guys who I really like. Uh, we talked about Cincinnati with uh, with with Desmond Ritter, but Jerome Ford is somebody who's really interesting who has. Uh, kind of that, um, I think in the right spot, Jerome Ford could develop into a 250 touch guy. Um, he's a good receiver, but he's also built pretty well, 5'11", 210. So despite being, uh, not maybe not being as explosive of a receiver as somebody like James Cook, I think Jerome Ford in the right spot could become a three down running back. Um, he's not going to be like Derrick Henry and get 300 carries, but I think he might be somebody who might get 210 carries and 70 targets in the right spot when he fully develops. And that would be a guy I think would be, uh, potentially very, uh, interesting. Um, and then there's, there's guys who are kind of your, your day three grinders who depending on where they end up going could end up having a really good, uh, NFL career. I'm talking about, uh, Hassan Haskins. Uh, who was a who was a great uh, player for Michigan this past year, and Kevin Harris from South Carolina. Guys who really are just kind of downhill grinders, but are probably going to get drafted on day three. And if then if the bell comes ringing, those guys can end up having good careers uh, or a good fantasy season. But of the guys who I expect to go on day three, I think Jerome Ford is probably the guy I'm most excited about. Bell always rings when you go to fantasypoints.com. Use the code 22FEAST. Certainly make sure you're checking out Joe on social media at FG underscore Dolan. You can always check out the highlights of this show and all the other ones. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL or at Ross Tucker pod on Twitter and Instagram. Other than that, I'm looking forward to your wide receiver and tight ends rankings next week. I'm stuffed. We're done. 
Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Feast podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker football podcast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100 Gambler or in Indiana, one 800 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 